All right, everyone. Hope you're good. Hope you're well. Hope you had a fantastic week. Right. So this week we'll be talking about market competition, imperfect competition and competition policy. So let's get to it. Now, the important thing to note is there are four different market structures. OK, so uh, every other kind of market you'll find revolves around these four. All right. So here we have um, a table we have our type of markets, um, number of firms, freedom of entry, the nature of the product sold, uh, some examples and of course your implications for your demand curve. OK, remember what we say our demand curve is usually like this downward sloping. All right. So here we go. Um, the first kind of market to note is perfect competition, right? So this is what we've been talking about for a long time, right? So the typical example will be in your market square. Everybody knows everybody. Um, everybody's selling the same thing, the same product, the same quality, um, you know, and everybody knows everybody else. OK, so the assumption with perfect competition is that there are very many firms in the market. OK, so because um, there's so many firms, we'll find out later that you are a price taker. OK, but there are many firms for some reason. OK, everybody can come in and leave the market. So we say freedom of entry is unrestricted. OK, now the type of product that they sell is homogeneous. So everybody's selling exactly the same kind of product. OK, so once again, your farmer's market, OK, or people selling salt It's the same salt, uh, the same taste, maybe same texture, same quality. So everybody's selling the same homogeneous product, OK, undifferentiated. All right. Uh, example, like I said, your farmer's market, say you're selling cabbages, the same type, carrots. All right. So everybody's selling the whole thing, the same thing, like wheat, for instance. OK, now what that means is. Your demand curve is going to be horizontal, all right? Like once again, perfect competition. So remember what we said about um, perfect elasticity, all right? So everybody is selling the same kind of product at the same price. If you try to jack up your price, there's going to be an infinite reaction, okay? People are going to leave your product because why should they buy your product? Everybody else is selling the same product, okay? So, um, Firms in this case are price takers. OK. Now, the second type of market um, is your monopolistic competition. All right. It's not exactly a monopoly. We'll talk about a monopoly later. That'll be the last one. But for now, let's just talk about monopolistic competition. All right. It's not exactly perfect competition, but there are some elements of competition here as well. Why? Because there are many firms as well, okay? So many firms, not very many, but there's several firms, okay? Not few, not just one. Uh, like we'll find out with your monopoly, and not just few, like in your oligopoly. There's several firms, okay? So think about your restaurant business, okay? Um, say one evening you decide to go get some curry, right? You walk along the high street. The different restaurants, okay? Many restaurants, all right? So. Entry into your monopolistic competition is also unrestricted. Anybody can start a firm. OK, you have to get your license, of course, but it's not restricted. You know, it's fairly easy to get in there. The kind of product they sell is differentiated. It's not the same. It might be similar, but it's not the same. So your restaurants, OK, you could go have some Chinese food, some uh, Indian curry, some African food. OK, depends. Like right? you could go get some fish and chips, right? Different um, kinds of sort of similar uh, products like food. OK, um, the example here, we have uh, builders and restaurants. So they're doing the same thing, right? Same service, but slightly different. Now, how is your demand curve in this case? It's downward sloping, but it's relatively elastic. OK, so, uh, you know, people respond to changes in price. OK. OK, so, uh, you know, something like that. Right. Um, right. So we're done with that monopolistic competition. How about oligopoly? Now, this is very interesting with the oligopoly. Oh, uh, you have some 
elements of competition, but not that much. The thing is, you have only few firms in the market in this instance, okay? So there are only few firms, and what that means is they can collude, okay? So we can actually act as if we are one, okay? So think about it, perfect competition, lots of firms, monopolistic competition, not so many. Oligopoly, we can count them, say maybe three, four, five, six, right? And if all the firms come together and act as one, then they could be effectively a monopoly, okay? But for now, we're just saying there are few firms in the market, okay? Now, what you have here is restricted access. So these few firms are gonna fight tooth and nail to be the only ones in there, right? Because they wanna make that money. They don't want too much competition. Now, what kind of products are they selling as well? Now, sort of differentiated, okay? So, you know, say for instance, your oil, um, industry okay it's a very good example of oligopoly opec right so you have all these countries selling fuel right but maybe just very slight differentiate dif differences maybe just uh, some levels and some minerals all right or it could be you know maybe uh, different products in a way so we're all selling cars but um you know we're selling um uh a mercedes a bmw an audi right with different features okay and there are a few of us and we make it really hard for others to get in there so high startup costs um high legal requirements um it's not easy to get the skills right so you have your oligopoly you can think about in terms of the banking industry the insurance industry all right uh building industry um technological industry okay now what kind of demand from um cops do these have it's downward sloping but relatively inelastic so the reaction to price is not as much so what we're having with um perfect competition horizontal price taker monopolistic competition it's downward sloping but relatively elastic so large reactions to changes in price we only go poorly because there are a few of us okay the re the reaction to changes in price is not that much but there will be some uh, um reaction okay and that brings us nicely to our final type of market it's a monopoly okay so you guys might have heard about this okay or you might have played the game monopoly um right what happens here is we have just one firm okay so it's just one person selling to everybody right so your perfect competition remember you have lots of firms monopolistic competition you have several firms oligopoly you have few firms which in monopoly you have just one firm okay now how do they do this well freedom of entry is very restricted it's hard for anybody to get in there okay very very hard top government legislation or uh, lots of money okay or the government might just give the contract to one person think about your local uh, water company for instance or, or train operators over particular routes okay so only one person has the license to do that right so access is completely blocked for everybody else the kind of products uh, these uh, firms usually sell as well is very unique, okay? So like, once again, your water firm, like we're, we're the only person doing it, right? Examples, your local water company, train operators over particular routes, all right? Now, how is the demand curve? It's more inelastic than oligopoly. So, you know, you know this is perfect um, inelasticity. So maybe something like this, right? So. It's not exactly inelastic, but very, very uh, inelastic, okay? So something like this, all right? Okay, so there you have it. Those are your four types, all right? So the features of the four market structures. Just get comfortable with this, look for some examples, and uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. All right, just to sum it up, these are the features of the four market structures in terms of competition and concentration. Okay, so we're moving from uh, right to left here, uh, and we're looking here at uh, competition, right? So, right, uh, Monopoly has the least competition because we're the only firm in there, followed by Oligopoly. There are few firms in there. Monopolistic competition, there's several firms, but not so much. In perfect competition, there are lots of firms, very many firms, and it's easy to come in and out. Now, in terms of market concentration as well, we can see 
uh, just down here, we can move from left to right. Okay, so perfect competition, right? Um, you don't have a lot of uh, control there. You know, um, there's not just one person dominating the market, right? There's a lot of us with monopolistic competition. Okay, we're getting there. You know, a couple of us starting to, you know, play some games. Oligopoly, there are a few of us. So we're getting very concentrated. And with Monopoly, we have pure concentration with just one firm in the market. All right, now for your class activity for this week, your first class activity, you are to go there, find out what market structure is good for A, consumers, and B, producers, okay? So go out there, look in textbooks, look online, look in any journal article, right? Just do some research and trying to find out what market structure is good for consumers and producers. So your class activity for this week, to find out what market structure is good for A, consumers, and B, producers. Okay, that's it for this week. I'll see you in class. Have a fantastic week. Be cool. Keep doing you. And be good, everyone. Bye-bye for now.